Next, we have Melody from Manchester, Connecticut, a fellow New Englander. <laughs> and while we're introducing her, we're not using her last name, and you'll explain that, won't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Let me pray for you. Sure, thank you. Lord, we thank you for Melody and her testimony. Uh, we thank you that, uh, that each one of us, you reach out to each one of us differently, you save each one of us differently. And uh, we thank you for all the testimonies that we hear and uh, we pray that, uh, that uh, your Holy Spirit direct her as she speaks to us and tells her her own story. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to first take a moment to, uh, to thank uh, my Abba, another word for my daddy, my Heavenly Father, um, which that name is found in Romans 8, 8, 15, Mark 14, 36, and Galatians 4, 6. Also, um, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who I have recommitted my life to. Um, and I also like to thank my great comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom as a believer lives inside me, as it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Um, as I have this great honor um, and privilege to tell my story today, um, you will see as the Apostle Paul wrote in uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, um, I too have become a servant of the gospel of the gift of God's grace given me through the works of his power. Although I am the least of all the saints, this grace has been given to me, and forever, for, forever I will be grateful for that. So I praise you and I thank you for your word. I thank you for opening up my eyes to the lies and the deceit of the Watchtower of Bible Tract Society, and also for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so to tell my story, um, I did not grow up in a Jehovah Witness home. Um, I did not grow up in a Christian home. Um, my parents, my mother, I remember, took me to catechism for a little bit. And um, I do remember um, um, going to a Baptist church for a little bit. And um, my, my home was in, in a lot of chaos. My mom was a waitress. My dad... Um, was a music teacher and quit that job and then um, started um, to feed us children playing out at weddings and restaurants and that kind of thing and um, so he, they had four children to feed and, and we didn't have my parents weren't around a lot I remember that I remember like kind of being brought up with babysitters and and a lot of unmanageability too like you know they were lacking the power of God they were lacking um, instruction you know I do see that they did the best they could with what they had um, but it was, you know, it was a tough upbringing. And um, I, when we were took into the Baptist church, um, I can remember being told a little bit about Jesus Christ. They, I remember being called out of the room as a little girl. I was probably around nine years old. And they asked me if I knew about Jesus. And, um, and I said yes. Even though I didn't have a lot of religious or scriptural training, I really felt a deep connection with God as a, little, as, a, as a child. I would actually go into the woods and go up on this mountain and pray to him. And um, spent, I felt spent time with him in nature. And I guess, you know, the word talks about that, that God is in nature. And I felt him there. And um, um, so I did believe in Jesus. I did say I accepted him as my Lord and Savior at that time. I do remember when we were attending that church for that short stint that it was the happiest time of my childhood. Um, I did, when I was going back to the unmanageability, even though um, alcoholism, um, my parents weren't alcoholics, um, alcoholism, my grandparents were, and my mother would not drink, although she was, come to find out, you know, she was taking some medication that she was sleeping a lot. So um, the house was not tidy. It was one of those houses that was so bad you didn't take your friends over to. It actually, the smell would hit you when you opened the door and, um, you know, from a lot of animals and unkept, you know, um, animals. And I, that's when I was first introduced to, to Jehovah Witnesses and that left a mark on me. Um, my parents um, had separated for a little bit. Um, my mother had taken me and my brother to Florida 
and um, my father was left alone and I remember he had a, an old tenant um, that um, was a Jehovah Witness and would, 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 I, I remember him studying on a Saturday with him and I was really um, blown away that this man would take his Saturday to spend with my father and sit here in this living room that really was smell bad and was, you know, in filth, really. And um, so my dad continued to study, although uh, my dad was never baptized. Um, he studied back and forth, but that left an impression on me about the witnesses. Um, due to some, um, you know, not having parents around, I can remember my sisters watching me. We actually, one time I remember, and I didn't even know the significance about this until years later, um, my older sister um, and her best friend bring me a Ouija board in, and um, I can remember um, being nine years old and just remember asking it his name, and that thing honestly m moved itself and said his name was Fred. I honestly, it, and, and um, but I thought I was nine years old and I, it didn't, you know, had nothing to do with me, um, and I never thought about it again for a while. Um, I, after, shortly after that, I started um, getting into some trouble. I started, we stopped going to the Baptist church, probably because we were never ready and the house was a disgusting mess. And, you know, I, I do remember them banging on the doors in this blue bus and us not being ready all the time. So they stopped coming and I'm sure my father didn't have a lot of interest at the time on it. And um, so then my life just, you know, some other things happened to me and I just, just dealt, with, dealt with those traumas and dealt with the breakup of my family. Um, through alcohol. I started drinking alcohol as um, a, a very young girl. I was like 12 years old. And um, I started smoking cigarettes. And um, it just, it made me, it made me feel better. And um, that continued, that lifestyle continued into my teen years. Um, unfortunately, um, I became addicted to, um, to alcohol. Um, smoking cigarettes, and then um, I was smoking weed too, and I put that down, didn't think I had a problem, but then I, I picked up um, cocaine, and I, and I ran with that. And that's how they say you know you're an alcoholic. I thought I was just a big binge drinker because I would party on the weekends, and truly alcoholism is when, you know, the, you, you, the thought comes to put it in your body, you put it in your body and you can't stop. You know, people who aren't, aren't alcoholics will have one or two or something, or, and, and then that's it for them. But I, I had the illness, and, um, I um, dated a, a young man who was also came from, although he was not a Jehovah Witness, his, his family was. His, all his sisters and his brothers were very depth into the org. I remember wanting to study a little bit with, the, with one of the sisters and um, the parents were not. But both of us together, we were, even though we, we, were, we dated for a long time, young, like 16 to 21, um, we were a mess together, you know, especially with me being a, a raging alcoholic. And, you know, I'd throw drinks, I'd scream at the top of my lungs, you know, it was a, it was a typical crazy relationship, <laughs> let's put it that way. And um, so we separated, and I didn't see him for many years. I ended up um, getting married shortly after that to a nice young Italian um, man who, um, you know, God bless him, the poor guy, I did not know what, what hit him when he married me. You know, I kept my, my addiction very very, you know, secretive. I did tell him before we got married, but I really thought that, you know, I was just going to stop. Like, I guess most alcoholics and addicts do. They feel like, okay, this major life change of me getting married is going to stop my drinking and drugging. And um, it didn't. Um, I hit my knees and I, and I called out to the God of my understanding at that time. And um, I said, please, please, please help me. I can't stop this. And things were getting worse. Things were really bad between us. And, um, and I was just hitting a bottom. I was also in, in nursing school at this time. I always wanted to be a nurse. That was my, my, um, my, my goal, my dream, even though I was told I would never become a nurse because my sciences weren't high enough. I just, God had put it in my heart to, I had just had a lot of compassion and love for people. And, wanted to do that and um, I had flunked out of nursing school. You need a 75 or above to pass a nursing school and I got like a 73 average and um, um, so, so I was just hitting bottom and, and so I just called out to the God of my understanding and um, not only did he come to me, he ran to me like the prodigal son. That story of the prodigal son, that was what he did. He ran to me and I, I came into, um, to, uh, the thought came to me that I needed to go into a treatment center and so I did. And when I got there, um, they said to me, you know, you have a disease that is progressive and it's fatal, and your husband can't help you, your job can't help you, nobody can help you, but there is one who can help you, and that's God. 
So we, we suggest that you get on your knees and you ask him to, to keep you clean and sober and at night say thank you. And so even though I didn't feel worthy of God, I started doing this. And then they told me about the 12 steps of um, Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, I got in, I said, you know what, I'm going to give this a try. My way of, of, of doing things are not, is not working. So I took all their suggestions and, um, and I started, you know, I started in those 12 steps. Although it's not a religious program at all, it's a spiritual program. And it just, it brought me back into God. Um, it, I went through those steps. I continued to help other women. I continued to go to meetings. And lo and behold, I got clean and sober. I stopped, you know, doing those things. I put the alcohol down. I put the cocaine down and um, eventually also cigarettes. And um, so I started that um, uh, journey, spiritual journey. Um, unfortunately, you know, my growth is, is long and slow. I ended up um, meeting someone in that program. Um, I ended up about, I had almost four years sober and I got pregnant. Um, and at this point, I felt like maybe I needed a little bit more God, of God. <laughs> that, so I ended up going to um, United Church of Christ and that was my first church. And however, even though I didn't know the scriptures much at all, I knew that what they were practicing was not scriptural. And for example, when I went to them, not one time did they tell me, did they ask me if Jesus was my savior? Did they ever ask me if I repented from living with this guy and having, I'm being pregnant? And um, they just married us and said, yep, you know, you're doing the right thing now. And um, truly that's unscriptural. You know, Jesus Christ, um, um, we need to repent of our sins. And that's constant in the Bible. And um, so, with, with that being said, I ended up um, leaving that church, being disillusioned with the church and going on to another church. I got caught up, you know, they, they talk about the scripture being tossed about by the winds <laughs> and not having the power of God in your life. That was me. You know, I did not know the scriptures. I, we went to another church and I was already caught up online with the prosperity gospel. We were, and so we got into that and oh my God, the torrent, it was just a hurricane. We ended up going bankrupt losing our house, um, just really bad things were going on. And, um, and I wasn't discipled at all, too. You know, we talked earlier about the message of the Trinity, and that was the message that I got about who, who God was in different forms, the ice water thing by the pastor. You know, she didn't know to the, I don't know, I guess they didn't, they didn't know how, from the scriptures, like being taught here, who God is. And I was confused, and I was um, I was hitting another rock bottom. Even though I had remained sober, and I'm still sober today, praise God for that. Um, yeah, amen. Um, I uh, I was hitting a bottom. Um, me and my husband were having a, a lot of struggles. Our marriage was ending, um, and then I um, met up with um, with that boyfriend again. Um, that was the was the, um, the whose family had had become witness. Now all this time had gone by. When I saw him, it was like I hadn't seen him in. Tw it was like the 20 years between us, or 19 years since I had seen him, wasn't even there. Because I, I really did love the guy, and I'm, I'm, I know he loved me. Um, and he had told me about how he, he had become a Jehovah Witness, and how you know it had changed him, and how he was had be, was celibate for all these years. And although he had gotten a really good job with, uh, with one of the electric companies and he was working a lot and stopped going to meetings and unfortunately he was no longer a witness at that time. So that kind of really piqued my interest because I was so you know, broken of what to do because I had, you know, I went bankrupt, another marriage had failed and um, it was like the perfect storm, you know. And so I decided to go check this out and I thought it was like church that you go, you know, and I remember the man that studied with my father too, that, that hit me, you know. And when I went to that kingdom hall, I was so impressed with those families, with the suits and the ties and the little children up there reading their Bibles. This was my answer. It was religion. That's what I was missing, you know. It, I didn't turn to Jesus, I turned to the Watchtower and Bible and Tract Society and basically that's what they told me you know, was missing in my life. And um, so I started studying with the lady I, I sat next to, um, and I was, I was off and running. I remember someone warning me from my church that they had their own Bible, and I said, yeah, but I'm using my own, I'm using my Bible. Oh, I'm making sure, you know? 
And there what I did come across a couple scriptures. I remember the John 1 1 thing, and I remember reading their explanation in the reasoning book and just blinders just going on it. And I was so impressed too that they knew the Bible because the second church I attended, um, I mean, they, I was there all the time, so they just quickly, and, they, and this was really unscriptural because I was so new, had me as a deacon in the church. And for, so and I could tell you where Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John was, but I couldn't tell you the Bible like the witnesses. So that was like, oh my goodness, you know, that really impressed me too. And so, um, and they're so loving, you know, they love on you, you feel, although I, I, I gotta say, like, God was sending me the warnings right away because I, I, I did notice that they weren't, because I was a single person, I wasn't kind of in the cliques and I didn't feel as much love, you know, and, um, I remember the church, though, I felt a little more love. And I remember I was going to talk, before I got baptized, I was going to talk to an elder about that. And I was just too afraid. They had me petrified. I had my, my Bible teacher couldn't come that day. So I just said, we're supposed to meet. And I said, I can't meet with you. But that was my question I had for them. You know, I just feel like there's maybe not enough love. And that's what scripture says, too. You will know my people by their love. You know, what is the fruitage of, this, of, of, of them? Do they have the fruitage of the Spirit? And, um, but I was just blind, you know, Satan blinds us. And, and, and in this religion, too, there's a lot of good in it, you know. Even though we come to the doctrines that were bad, you know, don't be a drunk, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, be faithful, be celibate. That really opened my eyes, too, because of I had noticed how, you know, getting pregnant out of marriage and doing these things just had really, in the heartbreak and heartache of having relationships, not that I was very promiscuous, but I was a sinner. And how that, I, no one ever showed me how bad of, how that affected my life, that sin, until the witnesses. So, um, with that being said, um, I got baptized. That man that I told you, my ex-boyfriend, he had come back. He had gotten reinstated. Um, shortly after I had gotten baptized, now my children too were now, they were little. Um, their dad was still going to the church every other weekend, so I said, you know what, you make your own decision, kids. Even though we're, our job is to study, when you're with me, I will take you to the Kingdom Hall, I want this to be your decision. Um, but still, I took them. They got indoctrinated. And um, so, after I became baptized, I had the blinders on, I thought, you know, everybody else is blinded by Satan, not us. And. Um, I, I thought that this was it, the religion. However, the longer I stayed in the religion, I was baptized for five years, I studied for close to two, and I was going from the Kingdom Hall from day one before I even started this Bible study. Um, I thought that this was the answer for me. And, um, but the deeper I got into the organization, the more apart I felt from God. I felt empty, I felt, I felt just empty in blackness. I don't know if he left me for a time because I had gone into this religion, um, but that's what I felt like, really. And as time goes on, I, I became more and more depressed and discouraged. Um, I felt, I, I, I mean, it was just bad. And um, so um, I can remember at the very, bo very bottom of, of my, my um, time there, I remember somebody saying to me, oh, isn't it weird how we're supposed to have the truth Yet, like so many of us, and, and she was speaking for herself, to suffer from depression, you know, like majorly. Aren't we supposed to have the joy of the spirit and all this stuff? And I was like, wow, yeah, you know, ding, all these dings. And um, we're, we're starting to go off. And um, I, at this time, because of the depression, I got into, uh, I went into a Christian counselor. I trusted the Christian counselor, and I knew from working in mental health myself, she could never cross my religion. She could never tell me hers. You know, although she just did like put out some scriptures, she always respected my, my stance and my religion, which I admire that because that's, that's professional. However, she said that she was praying for me and she said, you know, this woman, Melody, has such a God, she, she has such a heart for God. God, please, Jesus, tell me if, if she's wrong, please show her. But if I'm wrong on who you really are, Jesus, please convict me. And, um, it was that, that, I think that was one of the prayers that helped, helped change me. I, um, I started to um, have, all of a sudden, started to pray. I remember I was sharing the gospel with somebody, and I don't remember what scripture it was, but it was, she said to me, you know, that doesn't say that in my Bible. And I was just like, I was frantic. I'm like, oh my God, did I tell her the wrong scripture? I went home, I remember looking it up, and I couldn't find it. So, um, I'm, I'm not, 
I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't find it. And I, and I think it was the one in, you know, John where they said um, that the woman was caught in adultery or something like that. Um, or, she, or she was, I'm sorry, I, I was confused. She was, no, I was, I was, I was, that was another scripture, different scripture, I'm sorry. Um, but that was in the Bible. B bottom line is their Bible was, was changed. And I know at that moment, God gave me Revelation 22:18. And I don't remember studying it. I don't remember anything about it. But um, if I could just read it for you. Uh, Revelation 22:18 says, I warn everyone who hears the words of this prophecy, of this scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And if anyone takes words away from the scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and the holy city described in this scroll. And that hit me on, a, on like a ton of bricks. And so I was off. Um, I came across um, a book that they thought that Jehovah Witness teachings was demonically influenced. And as I just, you know, just started moving forward with my with my scriptural um, stance to really get into it and things started clicking like a snowball when i prayed god please please show me the truth of who you are he, he like a snowball man that that scales like fell from my eyes and um, I, there was just one scripture after the other scripture after the other scripture, all these points. I mean, I can't even get into them. It's, it's so much. Um, I knew that somebody was wrong. I went to the King James Version, which Jehovah Witnesses used to, used to use before the uh, uh, New World Translation. And that was correct, and theirs was wrong. Every, everything was correct. I ordered the encyclopedia. I went through the Greek and Hebrew scriptures. And not only that, but it made sense. Everybody else made sense except for the New World Translation. And praise, praise God. I was, I, I guess too, I was so upset that I was, I felt this, I was, we are deceived by the Watchtower. The people in the organization um, were such loving, kind people who have given their lives, their actually lives. I was only in for five years threw everything away um, to, to what they think is following God really tore me up and I was mad. So with that being said, after I wrote, I mean, I have four pages of scripture here on every single thing that God was revealing to me. Of course, the salvation was the biggest thing. <laughs> that salvation, because I was at a convention and that like did it for me. When they were, when they were saying, the Loyal to Jehovah um, Convention in the summer of 2016, that if you leave this religion, you are leaving God. I was so mad. I'm like, because of my training in Alcoholics Anonymous and because of God's power in my life, I know that, that God came to me. I know that he came to me through prayer, that I didn't I get it through that religion. At this point, I, I, like the lights had gone on. And also that, um, you know, I, I'm, how dare you, you know, how dare you deceive people of who Jesus Christ is, that, that this is a religion of works and, and not grace. And, oh, I was, I was mad. And so, and then when they, when they played at the convention, taking everything away worthwhile in life from people, you know, oh, no, you can't play that music instrument. You can't go to school. You can't, you know, it was just too much. And that if I was to, if I was to leave this organization, I'd be leaving God himself. I'm like, that is idolatry. And I was, I was so out of there. So my husband, um, unfortunately, didn't feel the same way. Um, and um, so I wanted to make a stand for Jesus. I, made, I wrote my four-page scriptural letter, and I, I called the elders up. And thank God I still was in, you know, I'm still active in Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's why I don't use my last name because um, we're supposed to be um, anonymous from press, radio, film to protect the newcomer. So nobody's scared to kind of come in that they'll, you know, people are going to find out. So, um, so anyway, so with that being said, I had this, their support because they supported me in the religion too. They said, you know, as long as they don't tell you to stop coming here, which they didn't, you know, the elders didn't, they knew I was um, an NAA. However, um, I had their support, thank God. They're like, you know, so 
I remember my sponsor wanting to come up, so I, I called the elders. No, the elders called me. They said, we haven't seen you. We wanted to talk to you. You know, and I just sat down and I said, you know, aren't you guys tired? You know, aren't you tired? Jesus says, come to, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And I did. I have so much respect for them because I know they're just trying to do what I did, you know, with my family. They think that this is the right thing to do. And anyways, um, I, after they had left, they couldn't dispute anything that I was saying at all scripturally, or they didn't try. Um, and um, they told me to put in a, a letter, and um, if I wanted to, although they um, weren't forthright with my, to my husband saying they did that, but, um, but they did. So I was happy. I actually wrote, actually wrote the letter. It was already written. Um, but I wanted to make a stand for Jesus Christ. I wanted to make a stand for my family, and I wanted to make a, uh, I wanted to send a message to the congregation um, about this, that I wasn't, you know, that this was a serious offense in my book. And um, so as I, as I left, as I was leaving, um, my daughter um, was not a witness. My son was not a witness. Um, my, uh, however, my daughter, just as I, I left in September, I was at this convention in 2016, and some of the damage that the, the society, the organization had done to my family. Um, my son came with me here to Witnesses for Jesus. I felt lost. I was so confused. And that's why I want to thank everybody who's here supporting this, everybody who's telling their testimony, and everybody on YouTube who have told their testimony. That's why I'm here today, because I, I thought I was crazy. And it was the YouTubers that really helped me say, you know what, you're not crazy. You know, you're right in this stance. And, and I was so afraid, too. You know, I was afraid. I wish I had someone's email address to talk to. You know, who, where is the right, or, you know, if this isn't the right religion, then where do I go? And um, so that's why I'm here today. And that's why it's such an honor to help, to give back what you have given to me. Um, I, my email address will be on this YouTube video, so if there's anybody out there, because there's no coincidences that you're here, there's no coincidences that you're watching this video, God is trying to reach you. He is trying to knock down those lies. Um, please feel free to email me. Be totally confidential, and I will tell you what I did. Um, so with that being said, um, after I left, my daughter, unfortunately, like, they took her to, um, she started going for the questions. I came out and she ran in, unfortunately. She had a bad experience in school and um, ran right in. And so now she was, they were taking her for the questions too, and my husband, this is her stepdad, did not tell me until the last time. They, then they told me at the last session of questions. They're like, oh, we knew we, how you would react. And um, my daughter too, she was a runner. She was very good. She had stopped running. She had threw a four-year scholarship away. She had stepped down from her team. She had um, gone in. She had got baptized, and she um, was um, a pioneer. She went in full force. And my son um, said, you know, he, he just left with me, and he said, you know, I'm not going to stand with a religion that shuns my mother because, just because she left because she doesn't believe in your religion. And um, that caused a lot of, um, a lot of, um, problems with me and my husband. I'm not sure if I mentioned that we had got married <laughs> shortly after I was baptized. And um, because, and, and really it was like, like my, I, I'm gonna say I had a lot to blame because I was so freaked out of what I discovered that these were my kids' salvation. I felt, I felt like my daughter had just threw $50,000 away, her life away. And there's so many people out there that they never get their families back, never. And so I was just so upset. And there was a lot of strife and division. I would try to, we would try to, we would really be fighting over scriptures. Um, unfortunately, it got so unhealthy that um, I felt like we had to take a separation to, for the health and, and, and wellness of the marriage. Um, so we did. Um, and it was breaking my heart too that my daughter was shunning me. It was so hurtful. She was, she was so close to women my age. Like that, that was that was now her mother. Those were her mother, and those people. And um, it was heartbreaking for me. So um, I, I told. I happened to um, at this point. I have recommitted my life to Jesus Christ. I started attending um, uh, evangelical church. I had the support of a pastor online that I trusted that was so scriptural and loving and like 
he's like a guy who like him and his family like left everything. Like he shunned because he he's like totally uh, a Jesus freak. I don't know. He's he's I just I trusted him and, and I told him what was going on and he told me um, he told me to that I was under um, uh, that this was spiritual warfare and it wasn't my husband who I was who I was fighting with and he gave me Ephesians chapter six verse twelve where it says for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Um, he suggested that I repent, and I um, he he felt too that it was demonically influenced. Like you know, he, people had blinders on in the organization, and I know I have my blinders on too, and that I was to fast and pray. And at this point, I was already led by God into spiritual warfare. I started fasting and praying um, twice a week. And that was, that was Holy Spirit because there is no way. I mean, I would not even get up, give up a meal, let alone get into that. But it is both in the Old Testament and the New Testament um, teaches us to fast and pray. Um, and uh, Joel 2.12 says, Even now declares the Lord, returning to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. In Matthew chapter six, Jesus says, when you give, when you fast, and when you pray, not if, he's assuming that as Christians we are gonna do this. But this was new for me, although the Holy Spirit was working on me because the, the pastor who had told me to start praying and fasting and repenting, um, I was already doing that in the days he told me to do it. I had already, Sundays and Thursdays, I, was, I mean Mondays and Thursdays, I was already doing it. But I don't know if any of you have seen that that the movie War Room. Um, I was that was me. I was in the closet. We were separated. Me and my son had had moved out to a different town, kind of far away. And I started praying and I started fasting, and and I finally too let like like was shared earlier. Let the Holy Spirit work. I stopped fighting with my husband and said, you know what, God, it's yours. I can't change this man. I can't change my daughter. I can't save them. And if she's going to shun me and have no relationship for the rest of my life, there's nothing I can do but pray and fast for her. And um, I remember going over there um, before we had reconciled and um, she was, you know, all dressed up in, you know, the, the skirt to the floor, and she looked so depressed and unhappy, and my heart, like Jesus was in me, he, my heart was so moved for compassion for both of them, I said, oh my goodness, you know, this is, this is horrible, but um, I'm going to just keep what I can do, and, um, and I need a breakthrough, and I was told that that was going to give me a break, breakthrough if it's God's will. Um, so, and then I was thinking uh, of, the, of Second Chronicles seven fourteen. I was holding on to that scripture, and my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. That's fasting is humbling, getting on my knees. I cried out to Jesus, please help me. If they pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And um, that's exactly what he did. <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Um, it's, it's an absolute miracle what had happened. The breakthrough that I wanted so bad, you know, came for me and came quickly. My daughter, um, just, I'm, um, my husband and I recon reconciled. We started um, counseling it again. Um, I moved back in, me and my son moved back in. And my daughter, when, as soon as I moved back in, she gave me a big hug. And um, she started to wake up and see things too. And um, what accelerated, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, what accelerated her, her exit was a gentleman that she was working with. She was going to college just to get a certificate degree. Um, and uh, she was working as a waitress. And she had met a man. And really, basically, he was an unbeliever, not a Christian either. So she had told the elders what she was, what she was doing, and um, she because she stopped attending the meetings, um, and I was really worried about her because at this point too she was having doubts, and you know some witnesses they leave, and and unfortunately the religion damages them so much that um, that they don't they don't turn to God, they don't turn to Jesus. You just think you know that the, the indoctrination is very very strong. So anyways, um, but praise God, praise God, my daughter has not returned to that religion. Um, my prayer was that both my husband and my daughter and all those witnesses out there would see the lies and deceit of the watchtower, 
um, and Bible Tract Society and the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what she, she has seen. So she broke it off with that boyfriend. She recommitted herself to Jesus Christ. She, um, yes, praise God. And it happened, it happened fast. So I left in 2016 and my daughter just stopped attending last year. Last, yeah, last, last, last September, I think. And um, not only that, but she started attending um, the Christian church that I'm attending. She is, um, she got, she stopped, she went back to college, she went um, to Central. When she had thrown her track, track uh, uh, scholarship away, she doesn't have a scholarship right now, you know, some of the damages we gotta pay. However, she, they let her walk, it's a division one school, and they let her walk on the track team, which is unheard of. So she's, she's on the track team, she's living at Central, she is bringing other women, other girls, to, to the church with her, people who are not believers at all. She's in InterVarsity, which is a Christian organization for college students. She is also wants to do a mission trip. And um, she, it's just amazing. And, I, and I, I, I say that with permission. You know, she told me that I can, I can tell you of where she's at today. And the bottom line is you can see Christ in her. She is so happy. She displays the, the fruitage of the Spirit. Amen. Praise God for that. Um, my husband, he has got the first part of it. He um, is on a journey. Praise God. He said he would never, ever leave. Um, he, I, my prayer was answered where he saw the deceit and the lies. He hasn't, he hasn't go to, um, he hasn't got there yet to the gospel, although he has not returned. He had a, actually a commitment at a convention and he, once he found out, he called them and said, listen, I'm not returning. I'm not going to be at the, com the commitment, which is huge. You, as you guys know, if you guys got commitments at conventions and, um, so he's not, he has not been back. He has, um, starting to study the Bible on his own. He doesn't want any outside forces at all teaching him, so he doesn't want to go to church or anything like that, but that in itself is an absolute miracle. He seems so much happier, you know, and uh, so things are, you know, things are, are going much better. Um, I wanted to say that, um, I just wanted to read Galatians 5, 22, 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there are no law, it says in Galatians 5, 22, 23. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, you know, am I displaying the fruitages of the Spirit? You know, I know for me, I'm not, when I was so down and so depressed, it was unbelievable. I just felt like God had come over and just ripped, took his hand and put his hand out to me, like, come, you know, I'm here. And so that's what I've done. I've, I've run to him. I'm, I've, um, so many beautiful things have happened since I've left besides not being depressed. Um, I have been able to, you know, help. I like, I, there's so many things out there for us to serve. You know, I was able to, to head up a, a, a water walk with World Vision um, for clean water for, you know, children in third world countries. That's a miracle. And, and he called me to do that. He said, you know, you're serving me now. What's important to me should be important to you. You know, and and it's I, I I just can't say enough of the changes that that have been made. Um, I wanted to end with um, just if you have a family member. First of all, I want to thank the spouses of the of the witnesses. Um, I know we have some here today who stick in there and stay married because it's not easy to be married to an active witness. But that shows your love, you know, and God will bless you, you know. And if you want a breakthrough, you might want to think about prayer and fasting. I don't know, you know, if it'll, if I know it, what it did for in my life. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, um, so today I am um, clean and sober. Um, my husband is doing a, we're doing a Bible study together. Um, we're reconciled. Um, and my daughter is just happy as can be back in college running on the track team. And I just wanted to say that um, I'm a work in progress. I've got a lot of work to do. Um, but I know that he's working on me and I'm on the right team now. I'm on the right team and um, I no longer, I see, you know, who is behind that organization and I want to help witnesses desperately. Um, I also, I think in the future, now this is just a thought, 
but I think in the future of maybe getting like doing a nonprofit for maybe um, a rent and a security deposit for people who are trying to get out of there because it's so hard when you're stuck. If you are stuck and you're indoctrinating, you have to keep going to those meetings. It's really hard to clear your mind of that. Um, so it's just a suggestion. I don't know if anybody out there has a nonprofit for them already for something like that, but I am interested in giving to it, if not starting one. Um, I don't know. These are the kind of things that God puts on my heart for people. And um, praise God. He, he took me out of that, and he's going to turn, as Romans 8.28 says, he's going to turn around with the enemy meant for my, for my harm. He's going to turn around for my good and the good of my family. And uh, that's it. Thank you.